Hi, this is Robin Cavallaro with the Cavallaro Heath Group of Remax One, and today Ryan Nagy with Spec Home Inspections and now Spec Septics is hanging out with me. So, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. So, um, what I want to do is talk about all the crazy stuff we go through with inspections and try to give an insight into it. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, everybody's hanging out at home. They're testing their septic to the max. Because yep. most of these places are most of these houses aren't used to having people at home. So what is it that something someone should be doing right now to kind of keep you from having to show up at their house with a big bill in hand? Yeah, well, and it's funny you say that because now that there's a lot of people uh in their homes uh more often than not now, uh the, the best thing you could do uh is is the maintenance. Um, a lot of times it's out of sight, out of mind, but pumping your septic tank uh, could save you um, or at least prolong uh, any problems that you, you may have. Pumping the tank is the number one maintenance. So, and you and I just went through this with um, a seller, which is a nice way to put it, with they could not understand why my buyer was not doing a dye test. And I will have my clients sign a waiver saying it's the dumbest choice they can make if that's what they're going to do. But, and I, the way I explain it to my clients is fine when it's face to face, not necessarily something I want to put on a video that's going to be shared with the world and <laughs> come back to haunt me. So what's the politically correct non-crass way of explaining the dose to a dye test and what you do? Um, if a, a dye, dye test um, themselves are completely inaccurate, um, that's the easiest way to put it. Um, you can still have a system that is failing or unacceptable in a certain way for a septic inspection for real estate transactions, but it still pass a dye test. And one of the easiest examples um, of that would be there is uh, something called a baffle in a septic tank. It's a very simple um, device um, that's used to prevent the top layer of debris in the septic tank from going out to the drain fields. If that's missing, that could cause a big problem with your septic system. A dye test would not show you that. Um, dye test don't... Um, I have found no situation with doing a dye test where um, that would be the best route to go. Um, they're completely uh, useless, for, for lack of a better term. <laughs> yeah, it's, as I tell my sellers, I'm like, when the buyer asks for a dye test we've done, I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, right. Find the paper, get it done. Do not argue on this point whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, because last year was the year of the failing septic <laughs> hopefully that's over with um but there was at least four systems you inspected for me that would have failed that would have passed a dye test correct failed miserably and yep. what was it at least two of them were critical area yeah yep um yeah and and, and that's the thing we've actually we will still use dye in conjunction with a septic inspection, proper septic inspection uh, for certain, certain things. Um, if we suspect somebody sending um, liquid out of the septic tank and into a stream or something like Ooh. that, then we'll put dye down the tank um, or in the septic tank, um, certain things like that. But we have actually completely uh, and 100% stopped even doing dye test, even with a waiver. I guess that's what you call it, a waiver. We have a disclaimer, I guess, that a client used to sign saying, hey, you've, you've stopped, um, you did not want to do a full septic inspection. Um, we, we only want to do the dye test. We used to have them sign that. Um, now we, we just, we don't even offer them uh, just for liability purposes. Yeah, it's like, I mean, the other part I love is when the buyer inspects it and then we get the request that the buyer wants my seller to pump it. I'm like, sweet. 
right. just agree, sign right. and go. Yep. So, um, but you have the buyer pay for the tank to be pumped. And yet that's not something hey, I'm, I'm getting there, but I'm still not good at standing outside while that's being done. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm usually inside my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's an acquired profession. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a smell. I just can't get past. Um, <laughs> well, it's not even summertime yet. So we haven't even got to the good part of that. Well, it's weird right now that I, I'm not there for the inspections. Um, yeah. You know, most inspectors are saying, no, 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 fire an agent, stay home. And yeah, it's... I've heard that, but uh, we, we, we don't do that. You know, I mm -hmm. guess it's a uh, um, preference on, you know, whether or not the buyer comes to the inspection. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell a buyer who's paying me to do a proper inspection uh, on their house or their septic system to not come. Uh, that, you know, that's kind of on, on them. Um, you know, we do everything we need to do to uh, stay as uh, safe as possible. Yeah, no, I appreciate that because, I mean, with the last one, for health reasons, they weren't there. Um, mm. And it was just too much and they were fine. Um, so the other part, too, that you and I have gotten a lot of pushback on is, and you know where I'm going, the distribution box. <laughs> And, you know, I understand why you check it. My clients understand, they appreciate it. So, but there's a lot of people, whether agents or buy or sellers who don't understand the necessity to dig up that area of their yard and yeah. look at it. Yeah, um, and uh, sometimes it's still a topic of debate, um, or I shouldn't say yeah. debate. It's uh, people don't understand, or like you saw last time, uh, you know, I don't understand why you have to do this mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z. And the bottom line is, is we do everything per Maryland department of environment guidelines for doing a inspection for property transfers in Maryland. So there is a manual um, that's about 48, 50 pages, something like that, um, which explains how to do a, a proper inspection. That's the recommended guidelines. Um, and that's where you have the confusion um, or ignorance or, or, you know, they say ignorance is bliss, um, where people just don't know or they don't care to know what the manual says. Um, so we do everything per that manual, um, not only to be as thorough as we can be for our customer, but also for liability purposes, you know. Um, yeah. You're, you're talking, um, and that's where big things come in, like the distribution box is a big, big thing. Even pumping the tanks now um, has been a big thing. I actually know realtors that have, um, you know, um, recommended my services for, for a long time, and they know that the tanks are supposed to be pumped during the inspection. Um, and if they are listing a home now, what they're doing is in the contract, they're stating however you guys do it in the contract that um, if the septic company does not pump during the inspection process, seller not responsible for pumping the tank after. Huh. Uh, you know. Um, That's pretty smart. I might yeah. steal that one. Yep. So, um, yeah, but we have the manual. Um, we can get the manual to anybody who wants it. Um, mm -hmm. I can either share it with them on um, you know, a PDF through our email. Um, they could really even go to, I believe, go to the Maryland um, or uh, MALPA, the Maryland Onsite Wastewater Professionals Association, and look up the manual there as well. Um, it's it's all pretty pretty clear on what the recommended process is for doing it for these inspections. It's just some people um, don't do it that way. And if you can't sleep at night, it's a good way to cure insomnia too. There you go. Yep. <laughs> um, the other thing you do that a lot of that some other inspectors don't do is you actually walk on the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, obviously there's exceptions to the rule in an A-frame house. You can't really get up on that. But uh, yeah. we, we try to get on every single roof we can get on. Um, you know, I know there's some companies out there that may still be using 
drones and things like that mm -hmm. to actually check the roofs. One, you have to have a pilot, you know, FFA certification, which I thought about doing. Um, but the reason why I never, never have is because a drone can't take off the chimney cap. A drone yeah. can lift up a shingle, you know, um, so, yeah, I love the one where you like picked it up. You're like playing Jingo with it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. No. No, I like to be able to touch things. So uh, well, it's like I, when Byron and I were sitting in the bottom. Going, that's probably not good. <laughs> so, not good, right? So. And Sean's like rebuilding them in creative mm -hmm. ways. And he put it back correctly, so nobody yeah. heard. Uh, yeah, we 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 try to get on every single roof we can get on. Well, it's like, you know, I, in my little pea brain, you know, I'm thinking, and I've had this happen before, if you're looking at the roof from either the ground or just from the attic, you can't necessarily see where the soft spots are. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that there, there's all kinds of amazing things that I've seen that probably people wouldn't believe me if, if it wasn't on Facebook or, <laughs> or, or something like that. We actually did in this... I can remember it, um, so that should tell you something. Um, this was probably two or three years ago. It was a house that was a um, foreclosure um, that a bank owned, and I guess the bank hired somebody to come into the property and do some repairs. Well, the roof from the street, you could only see the front of the roof. There was no other location where you could yeah. really see the back of it really mm -hmm. good. Um, the front was, you know, facing the neighborhood. So everyone saw it. What, what the contractor actually did was only replace the front of the roof, <laughs> not the back. And the back was very, in very severe deterioration, but you really couldn't see that from the ground. So, I mean, so he put lipstick on the pig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. So it was pretty wild. Yeah. Well, we see that so much. Um, so, Here's the thing, again, everybody's at home right now, climbing the walls, getting to know more about their house than they care to know about. And I gotta think about this, it's like, how many times do you go out and do inspections for me that the sellers live there like five or six years? And I've been in my house now 10. Mm -hmm. How often should someone get their house inspected? Um, that's, that's actually a good question. We actually do um, a yearly, um, you know, uh, inspection service. We actually send out an email when our um, customers have uh, been in their house for a year. Hey, you know, we can we can check certain things out for you. Um, make sure they're in good working order type deal. Um, inspections, you can, you know, that, that's kind of a hard one. Um, if you suspect that you have an issue, we can always come out and do a um, single, what we call a single component inspection, mm -hmm. um, where we take a look at just the the, the roof or, or anything like that. We've done several where um, people have actually been unhappy with uh, work that contractors have done, and we've come out and, and taken a look at certain things they've done and what have you. Um, it's a good thing to get your house inspected before you want to put it on the market. Um, that would probably be one of the, the biggest times to have your house inspected. I, I would say, um, you froze not up. only because you can, you know, get some simple, very simple repairs done, but it is still there. Ryan. And oh, there you are. Okay. You froze up for a second. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, no, exactly. Cause, um, Thankfully, you can't see it on the video, but there's a lovely crack up here that I had one contractor come and repair for me, but he didn't take the tape off and patch it correctly. So the crack came back with friends. Right. And mm -hmm. the contractor you introduced to me is going to be fixing it for me as soon as we're, the house arrest is over with. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. As I call it, um, yeah, because, but it's, it's so, 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 so hard to find good contractors right now. And if you're like me, where you don't know the ins and outs of home repair, that's why I write checks. 
you don't necessarily know how something was done correctly or whatever. And Correct. Yeah. It, you know, it usually isn't until like a year later, like, huh, I don't think that's right. Um, right. And then when you text some pictures and they go, well, you must have blah, 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 blah happening. And when you prove it's not, they just mm -hmm. disappear into the bushes and never be seen again. Right. Well, I, I, I have a hard time. Uh, I have actually a lot of people um, call and when we add, when we do um, inspections, sometimes they'll mm -hmm. um, you know, ask about contractors. Uh, the only contractors that I actually give any, um, any customer a recommendation on would be somebody that has worked in my house personally that I have um, a good experience with. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and I, sometimes I don't even like doing that only because just because I had a good experience with somebody doesn't mean that somebody else is going to think that, you know, that they're going to have a good experience with them. But um, yeah. I, I only, I only recommend one, one contracting company. Um, mm -hmm. And really a, I, I, I know a, a good chimney con contractor um and a good electrician but they're they're few and far between and that's the thing right now is that a lot of times if i'm gonna be if somebody wants to be on my list to be recommended i'll come up with something that has to be done in my house and maybe i'm giving away that i shouldn't say this but and i want to see how they're going to treat me as a customer i want to see how they're going to treat my house are they going to be fair with their estimate and all of that and if they leave here and i'm happy Sure, I recommend them. Right. Um, so, all this. Oh, the other part too is like new construction. So the builder is supposed to be warranting it for the first year where they come back and do all the repairs. Do you go out like around month ten or eleven and do inspections to help the buyer put together their wish list for the builder to? go back and fix everything? Um, yeah, I mean, we've definitely done that. Um, a lot of times those end up being uh, more of cosmetic issues um, than, you know, major deficiencies or deficiencies with, with, uh, with certain components. Um, we do do a fair amount of new construction inspections prior to settlement. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, the customer calls us like any others and, and they want to have the home inspected to ensure that everything's done, you know, correctly and to par. Um, and a uh, prime example of this was actually um, right here in Prince Frederick. And it was not too long ago, but we've been very, very um, wet. We've had a lot of rain. Well, they had rain barrels installed around at every gutter instead of you know just letting it run out to uh, well now yeah. however it requires um uh, uh dry the dry well dry well your, thank you yeah these are my words now they require a dry well <laughs> but instead of a dry well you can have these rain barrels installed oh. rain barrels so you, they collect water so you can water your plants and everything else there was one of these at every single downspout the issue turned out to be because it was actually letting some water penetrate into the garage the issue is the rain barrels if you don't maintain them and empty them out they flood and they overflow and then it all pulls around your house so, so and that's what i was going to say i mean with all this rainwater we've had and i'm going to be the first to say if it's raining hard I'm not going out there and checking a rain barrel and making sure it's got a hose attached to it that's going out somewhere else to a flower bed or whatever. I'm, it's gonna wait till it stops raining. And right. you know, I'm watching right now from all the rain we've had this morning, because you know, my, and the day before, you know, over the last week, my pool right now is about to overflow. Right. So, I can't imagine these barrels that look like they hold what, maybe 50 gallons max? Yeah, yep. You're gonna go, go through that fast. Very fast, especially with the rain we had. And that was, that was exactly the issue. And mm -hmm. that's what I said. The only way that you can prevent that is use all the water that's in the barrels mm -hmm. and, or it, when it 
you know, starts to rain or become an issue, mm -hmm. you're going to have to go and hook a hose up to every single one of them and then let the water rain, uh, the water drain out of the bottom of the hose. Um, so yeah, and that was, that was new construction. And that is, I don't know if the rain barrels were an upgrade from the dry well or, or vice versa, but uh, they, they were going to cause an issue. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it I mean, I've seen them and they look really cute around the house. That gives a lot of personality. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think about where, how you're going to do that. Because I'm also thinking it's like, it's not like you're going to hook a hose up to it and wash your car. Correct. Because that's water, that's dirty water Gravity. coming off your yep. roof. And so, I mean, all you can really do is hook up like a hose to go out through your flower beds. But mm -hmm. And that's it. And there was, there was, the, 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 there was at least, at least eight of them. Every single downspout had, had one underneath of it. So it's, it would be, be a lot to maintain. Well, I'm also thinking if you, you know, one or two looks really cute. I'm thinking eight. <laughs> there, there, there was a lot. I will say it, it, it was, um, it was interesting. Uh, yeah. So, well, that's actually something I didn't really think about too much is with the new construction because they've, they're getting the warranty and the state is pretty good. I'm not going to say it's great, but it's pretty good at enforcing that builder's warranty to make them come out and do the repairs. Um, and then usually you have a home warranty company that's going to be standing by it for like the first anywhere from two to 10 years. Yeah, I, I think um, the big thing is, and, and I don't know if this holds true for every builder, obviously they have um, uh, foremen and, and, and some form of you know, quality control, um, but I don't think their foreman is going around and testing yeah. every window, testing every outlet. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, we've, we've seen it, we've seen fairly big things on uh, uh, home inspections with new construction that just weren't caught for lack of a better term. Roofs, roofs are a big thing. I've, I've seen them where literally there's been a penetration for a vent pipe, but no vent boot was ever put on. <laughs> I've seen, um, <laughs> yeah, I've seen the wrong ridge cap shingles where they were completely wrong across the ridge of the roof. So, um, you know, a lot of times, a lot of people rely on the contractor, um, who's doing the job to, to do a professional job. And, sometimes it just you know there's things that aren't right it's like oh sorry yeah <laughs> if i can fix it <laughs> um right now we're also seeing a lot of flips and as one inspector i have worked with in the past i love his statement that some of these people should not be flipping pancakes much less houses mm -hmm. yeah and that's where it gets scary because it looks amazing and then once you move in and you start using it, you realize that, hmm, don't know, this light switch doesn't do anything. Nothing works over here and you can't, mm. figure, and, and just like the one you just did for me, it's like the county come out and check for the electrical permit and you came back with a, several items that did not pass for electrical stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, well, and a lot of times on these, these uh, flips. <clears throat> I have a very good idea on whether or not it was done with permits. <laughs> or without. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just, just simple things that um, you notice that you can tell it wasn't done with permits. One big one is expansion tanks on hot water heaters. So they're, they're required now. So yeah. they're required and you have a new water heater that was put in in 2019 and there's no expansion tank. I know a licensed plumber didn't do it and it wasn't pulled. The permit wasn't pulled. Um, and so is a beer and pizza event? <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I see that a lot on uh, um, residential rehabs or flips where, you know, obviously people are trying to make as much money as they can and, and, mm -hmm. and spend as little as, as they can. But at the end of the day, you know, if you, if you want to be a professional and you, then you make sure your numbers are right. So you can hire a licensed contractor, or licensed electrician, licensed plumber to do stuff right the first time. Cause it's probably costing you money anyways. 
I, and yeah, because it was one investor I helped the, to do a flip and he selected one based on, you know, they did come across with some pretty good um, recommendations. He was the cheapest, but he took four months or so to do the work that someone else could have done in 30 days. So we missed the prime part of the market and ended up having to drop the price to get it sold. Mm-hmm. And it was ridiculous because that choice cost him probably about $25,000. Right. Yep. Well, and yeah. I, actually it was um, one I did fairly recently. Um, that actual investor on, on a property that I inspected um, gave us a call he was interested in having us inspect their next residential rehab prior to yeah. them doing any work uh yeah. you know well it's like the one that we had the whole debate over the whole septic tank thing and the that disaster that guy had bought the house as a foreclosure and didn't bother to inspect the septic tank except for the dye test right and yep. Thank God it ended up with just the distribution box that was a problem, but mm -hmm. they were like not making a ton of money on that one anyway. And I can only imagine if the septic had failed. So. Yeah. Well, I tell people all the time, I said, if, if you could only afford a home inspection or a septic inspection, I'd get the septic inspection. Mm -hmm. um, only because um, that is the most expensive system of your house unless you have structural issues with the home itself, um, that, that is the most expensive system that, that you'll have to replace. Well, and see, I'm gonna take a step further. If you can't afford both of them and you can't afford a good home inspection, you probably should not be buying the house because okay. when something goes wrong, you can't afford to fix it. Yep, yep, very um, true. Yeah, and because I know what I've put into this house over the last 10 years and it's sickening the amount of money I've paid into it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still my home. And, yeah. you know, part I of it's- I have a house too, but I just keep throwing cash. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you just got the shredder there? You just keep putting the cash yeah, through it? <laughs> I mean, it's just it's crazy. But, you know, I bought a 30 year project, so that's what I get. Yeah, well, when I bought this one, I didn't think it would be a lifelong project, but um, it's every year I'm like, huh, what can I do this year? Mm -hmm. So I've got the list of items ready to go whenever this is over with, and yep. it, then I'll be one step closer to having what I want, and probably by the time I get exactly what I want, I'll either be starting over with the other projects, or I'll be buying my house in the water, which is what I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, the, the other big things that I have you test for all the time, radon and water. So, yeah. you know, to me, I always call radon my favorite environmental thing because it's the easiest one to fix. Mm-hmm. But I got a feeling too that that's going to be the next love child for the EPA, where they're going to make that their poster child, where they want everybody getting rid of it. So right now I am pushing my clients to test for it, not only because it's a safety issue and a health thing, but when they get ready to sell in five to seven years, that they're not going to be stuck paying the bill to put it in. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. What's the difference between the digital one that you usually use and the canisters? Yeah, so most of the, the, the canisters or um, the ones you get from Lowe's or um, the lab around here that supplies canisters to inspectors uh, are charcoal canisters. Those charcoal canisters is all they do is uh, absorb uh, the, the radon in your home and you always have to use two. That's why there's always two of those charcoal canisters set up um, because they basically take an average of the two uh, concentrations from each canister and give you a, uh, an average. We use what's called a continuous radon monitor. Um, it is the, it's the best technology out right now to test for radon. It, um, 
it's a device that we just install for basically two to seven days, like any other short-term radon test. Um, and it takes um, temperature readings, humidity readings, barometric pressure uh, readings, and radon readings every hour on the hour. Um, a lot of those are pretty important. Uh, it also has a tilt sensor um, and a AC uh, sensor. Uh, a lot of those are actually pretty important because the radon concentration in your home goes up and down all the time. And yeah. it goes up and down depending on uh, the weather is a big factor uh, on the radon concentration. So, so with the tilt thing, you can tell if a seller takes and sits it outside for a little bit. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. It, it, uh, we, we've, I've had them where, um, you know, we have little signs and everything that say, please make sure you have closed house conditions, doors mm -hmm. stay closed and everything else. Well, when it's, um, you know, when the pressure is a certain, you know, all the time. And then next thing you know, um, you know, the doors and windows are all open. You know, you, you can tell that on, <laughs> on the charts, and on the, on the graphs. So, um, it, and it gives you all that in detail. So when you're using charcoal canisters is all it is, is some that says the lab certified that it's X amount of, uh, radon concentration. Um, this will give you the entire readout for the entire time that, that the radon test is in there. And you only have to use one of those electronic uh, devices because um, they are far more accurate than, than the radon uh, charcoal canisters. So with the canister, you froze up a second. Oh, there you are, you're back. Um, so with the charcoal one, I could open every window in my house, every door, let the air flow through, and you as the inspector would never know that I had manipulated the test. I'm frozen. Is there? Ryan. I can see you trying to talk. <laughs> Could you see me, but couldn't hear me? Now I can hear you. Okay. Uh, now you go. All right, you're back. Yeah, they can um, do yeah, pretty much anything they want with them, and you, you would never know it. Cool. So then the other big one is, I mean, obviously we got mold and all that, but yeah. um, the biggest one that comes back almost every time is bacteria in the well. How does bacteria get into a well? Um, Nine times out of 10, I would say it's because of the, the well cap, the well head um, in, the, in the yard. So um, the newer well caps are PVC and they're mm -hmm. sealed so much better than uh, the older style caps. And also um, there's a little conduit that actually plug comes in there. Even the ones with the PVC cap have a little uh, three quarter inch line PVC line that goes into them and connects to that cap. A lot yeah. of times that'll work its way loose and then stuff can get in there. What it actually ends up being is that ants and, and everything else, bees, um, they'll get into your well cap, go to the very bottom of your well and, and they contaminate the water. So okay. well caps are a huge thing with how, how contamination actually occurs. A lot of the older well caps aren't sealed as good as the PVC caps. Um, and then you still have the old shallow wells that are still being in use today where you, they're almost impossible to, to chlorinate and make bacteria free. So with those, if something's happening on your yard, it could easily just float down into your drinking water? Yep. Yep. It's, um, so just as all you got to do is go out to your well cap. You on, you on, are you on a well? I am. And see, I have this really cute decorative thing around it. So I don't actually see mind. it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's, um, I've got this like, oh, it is so, it, it needs to be thrown out. But I don't <laughs> want the big pipe just sticking out of my yard. So I need to find something else cute to put around it. Right. But it looks like one of those like wooden wishing well things yeah. that I see people mock and go, yeah, that looks really cute. I'm like, yeah, it's in my front yard. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, next time you walk by there, just peek inside. You'll see a PVC cap uh -huh. on it. And then make sure that you'll see, you'll see the other little PVC line coming through there and attach into the cap and make sure that that's all good. Um, if it's mm -hmm. not, then we'll just have to get it fixed up. 
And that's when I really don't want to know what I'm drinking. <laughs> yep. And see, the lot of things that other people don't, don't uh, know is um, your well water when you're on a private well is not regulated. Yeah. So mm -hmm. people go years and years and years without ever testing their well water. I, okay. So I'll be the first to admit <laughs> that would be me. Bought my house in 2010. Do you want to know when the last time I tested my well water? I'm going to say 2010. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and each time I do, each time I sell a house in my neighborhood and it has to be shocked, I'm like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's a little too close to home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, a lot of people can actually, because basically they test for, uh, e. coli and, and total coliform is yeah. the bacteria that we're, we're testing for. And a, a lot of times, some people just don't have any, you know, reaction, I guess you would say, to, to total coliform, you know, so they, they would never know. Um, so your well water is kind of crappy? So sometimes it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, I mean, if you had a problem with your well or think that they, you know, you know, it's, it doesn't taste good or, or you're getting sick, then yeah, I mean, test your well water. Yeah, maybe time. Um, and at that <laughs> point, I was like, all right, test it before I go out and I'll go on, out of town for a vacation while y'all shock it and do your thing. Right. Yep. And, and, you know, instead of having to smell that god awful bleach smell everywhere. Mm hmm. Well, and that's people, and, and that, that's true too. I mean, people probably don't ever chlorinate their wells you know <laughs> <laughs> oh what <laughs> you know? so yeah i mean all right yeah. look keep in mind i do actually you know even the guy who maintains my air conditioning and he, hvac system they change the filter for me um <laughs> right <laughs> it's I, I am a contractor's dream <laughs> right <laughs> and i, I and a lot of the stuff I'm capable of doing, and I can watch a YouTube and I can figure it out because most of it probably isn't that hard. Mm -hmm. I don't have the time for it. Yeah. I also don't have the desire to, um, mm -hmm. because if this wasn't lockdown, just like most, what, are you enjoying my cats fighting? I don't, well, I was looking, it was twice. I'm like, what the heck was that? Oh, uh, so he, that's a female. Oh, the male will torment the crap out of her yeah. <laughs> because right now I'm not playing with them and right. I should be in their world. So, but just like, you know, people who really know me, you know, these are usually done. These are usually good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not happening right now. So, and no, I don't want to be digging into nasty stuff and, yeah, and I don't, and I'm scared to go out there and lift up that well thing off of my little pipe because I don't know what's curled up around it. And you've seen me run just as someone go, "Oh, look, a black snake." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't know someone in heels could run that fast. Yeah, yeah you're pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, well, Ryan, I greatly appreciate you chatting today, and. Um, and everything you do for my clients, because you don't scare them, which I like. You educate them, you inform them, but it's not like, oh my God, it's a spider in the crawl space, run. Yeah, um, yeah, well, we, we just try to, I tell everyone all the time, uh, I just, I would, I do inspections how I'd want my own house inspected, and that's, that's just how it is. No, and I appreciate that. So anyway, will you have a great day, and I will see you very soon. All right, have a good one. <laughs>